So friends, let's make these delicious, easy and healthy veg cutlets. So to some olive oil, I'm going to be adding the paste of two cloves of five cloves of garlic, two green chilies and half an inch of ginger or one inch of ginger. I'm just going to grind this to a coarse paste. I've added about a tablespoon of olive oil to my pan and I'm going to fry this for at least a whole minute because we want the rawness of the garlic to go away. So fry this really well. Now I'm going to be adding one small onion that I've chopped fine. We're going to fry the onion well for again another minute or so. Now these wedge cutlets are packed with veggies so you can get your kids to eat this. It's a great tiffin item, a great uh, recipe to take to office or just serve with some pulao etc. Now here I have one cup of carrots that I've just chopped really finely. So I've washed the carrots, I've uh, you know take peel them and really chop them fine. So fry the carrots as well. Now I generally like to use the orange carrots compared to the red carrots. Next, we're going to be adding some more veggies. So here I have a five or six French beans that I've chopped really fine. So about half a cup of French beans. Fry that well too. And since we're using olive oil, it's really healthy. Now, if you don't have olive oil, you can substitute that with regular oil, but just use a little bit lesser, that is say about a teaspoon of oil. Or you can also go for a better option, which is clarified butter or ghee. Now I'm going to be adding half a cup of boiled corn. So I've just, you know, taken the corn, just boiled it for about a minute in water, drained off all the water and you're using the corn. Now that water can be used to make soups, etc. So now fry all of these veggies. You can even add more veggies of your choice like broccoli, baby corn. The, the, the list is endless. The sky is the limit for the uh, veggies you can add to this recipe. Now we're going to add some spices. So here I have one teaspoon of cumin powder or jeera powder. This is homemade. I've just roasted the jeera a little bit and ground it in my mixer jar to a very fine powder. Next, I'm going to add one teaspoon of dhania powder or coriander powder. Again, this is homemade. Next, I'm going to be adding half a teaspoon of pepper powder. And I'm going to be adding half a teaspoon of Kashmiri red chili powder. Now mix all of this really well together. You can even add some spinach leaves. You can add, uh, like I said, broccoli, baby corn. Now we're going to add some salt to taste. So roughly a teaspoon or so, depending on what how much salt you like in your food. Mix everything well. See that everything gets fried really well and everything gets, uh, you know, coated with all the lovely spices that we've added. And now we're going to turn off the heat and we're going to let this mixture come to room temperature. Now in a bowl, I'm going to take two medium uh, boiled and mashed potatoes. So now to perfectly get the right, you know, the potatoes to the right consistency, boil them on one whistle on high and then simmer for exactly 10 minutes. Let the cooker cool completely and then take them out immediately. Let them cool, peel them and mash them. Now I'm going to add our veg mixture to these potatoes. Now what the potatoes does, it's just that it gives it a body. So you can form the cutlets. Now 
mix everything really well. Now, if you want to skip potatoes, you can also add crushed paneer. Now, here I'm going to add the juice of half a lemon. Mix well. So, if you're planning to give this to your kids in their tiffin box, you can prepare it the night before, form the cutlets, keep it in the fridge, and in the morning, all you have to do is just shallow fry them. Now, we're going to add some breadcrumbs. So, I've just taken about two bread slices and ground them in my mixer jar. You can buy ready made breadcrumbs also. Ready made breadcrumbs are not available everywhere. And now, mash this really, really well. I know it's really easily available in places like Bandra. But otherwise, it's really difficult to get breadcrumbs. So let me know in, your, in the comment section below whether you all get breadcrumbs easily around in you know, shops around your place. Anyway, so now you can just make it into any shape. But I have this little heart shape mold that I, you know, it's been sitting in my kitchen drawer. So I just washed it, wiped it. I said, let's give it a little bit of a, uh, you know, make it look a little better. So I'm just using the mold. You don't have to use the mold. You can just make them into normal cutlet shapes. You can make them round. You can make them into croquets. I said, let me just give this a little fancy look. And uh, that's it, guys. We just form these. And it's a good idea to put it in the refrigerator for at least 5 to 10 minutes because then, you know, it actually sets and then it becomes very easy to handle. And then I'm just going to dip it into some uh, breadcrumbs and fry it and shallow fry it in some olive oil, just about a tablespoon or so. Now, if you're okay with using egg, you can also dip this into a beaten egg. Just take one egg, beat it up. You can dip that and then uh, put it in the breadcrumbs if you're okay with that. Otherwise, if you want to keep it completely wedged, then just put it directly in the breadcrumbs. The breadcrumbs stick to it and, you know, uh, the, cu the cutlets become very nice and crispy. And this goes so well with some tomato ketchup, with some green chutney. It's a great side dish with some pulao. And you know, you've got all your veggies in there. So that way you can get all your veggies in your tummy, in your family. You can get to eat them, eat these uh, you know lovely cutlets and get all vegetables. Get your family to eat vegetables. So like you've seen, I've just taken some olive oil. I like cooking either in olive oil or in ghee. I try to avoid... Uh, normal cooking oil as far as possible and even if I use cooking oil I use very little and that's it guys so I hope you try out this recipe let me know how you liked it and let me know what veggies you added in addition to the ones I have So friends, today we're going to be making surmai croquets or surmai cutlets and I'm using leftover fried fish. Now many times we have surmai or some pomfret or some fried fish left and you know we don't know what to do with it. So I found this easy way of making cutlets with it. So what I've done is I've just taken off uh, you know 
uh, the the thorns or the bones, the skin, and I've just mashed up all of the flesh of the uh, fish, the fried fish. Now we have one beaten egg, or oh, I'm using two rather. This is one uh, small uh, onion cut fine, one green chili cut fine, a uh, fresh coriander leaves, some breadcrumbs. So what we're going to do is, uh, and some other breadcrumbs for coating the croquets. Now we're just going to add the onions. You can also add tomatoes, uh, but I'm just adding onions. Then I'm going to be adding the green chili. Now I have a recipe of how to make mori cutlets, bangda cutlets. I'll leave the link of all of those. Otherwise, if I don't, if I forget to, then just search in the YouTube search button. Just put Bangra cutlets Akshita's recipes with an apostrophe S and you will get my recipe. Now I'm going to add the breadcrumbs. So the breadcrumbs add some body to this dish and it, uh, you know, you can able to bind it very well. And then I'm going to add the two beaten eggs. Now all we have to do is just mix everything together. Now don't add any salt because the fried fish generally has salt in it. But you can, uh, you know, just taste the fish before you add all the other ingredients. And if you feel like you need to add a little bit of salt, you can add. And now all you have to do is just put a little bit of tea, uh, ghee or clarified butter on your hands or some cold water. That will help you form the croquets really well. You can also form cutlets, whatever. The choice is yours. And then just, uh, you know, form them into croquets. Just coat them with uh, some breadcrumbs and uh, just shallow fry them. So this is a really easy way to eat, you know, leftover fried fish. Sometimes what happens is you fry the fish and then you keep it in the refrigerator and no one is really interested in again eating fried fish the next day, which generally happens at my place. So then I, you know, try to uh, disguise it in the form of some nice snacks like croquets, etc. And serve this with some prawn pulao or some sorak and some uh, rice with some little pickle at the side. So that really, you know, uh, we don't waste any food and you can eat this delicious fish in this form. So give me some more ideas. What do you all do with leftover fried fish? There are many uh, people, you know, you can make so many different recipes with leftover food. So let me know. You can write to me on my email address. It's uh, written uh, in the comment section below. Or you can just write in the comment section, uh, you know, you can tell me what you all do with leftover fried fish. So here I'm just forming the croquets. I learned this from my dad. He was like very meticulous and uh, he used to take a knife and uh, you know shape them to perfection. So they all look the same. And then just shallow fry them. That's it guys. So let me know how you like this little simple recipe.
Akshita here from Akshita's Recipes. How are all of you all doing? I hope all of you are doing great. Uh, today's recipe is an instant appam and some tomato chutney. This is a different tomato chutney. I have uploaded a tomato chutney for my regular viewers you know, who watch all my videos. That is a different recipe altogether. This is an accompaniment to appams. You can also have it with dosa. You can have it with idlis. I like this recipe. I hope you try out this recipe, especially the tomato chutney. It is just amazing. So without much further ado, let's just jump straight ahead into the recipe, guys. Now for the tomato chutney, we are first going to heat some oil in a pan. To that, we are going to add about half a teaspoon of cumin seeds and two red chilies. We are going to fry this for about a half a minute on a low flame till the chilies and the cumin seeds are a little bit fried. And once they are, we turn off the gas and take out the chilies and the cumin seeds and keep them aside. Now to this oil itself, that is turning the heat back on, we will be adding some chopped up roughly chopped up onions and tomatoes i've taken one small red onion and two medium sized tomatoes just chop them up roughly and i've taken just one clove of garlic so to the same pan turning the gas on with the heat we're going to add an onion two tomatoes and some garlic now we're going to fry this for some time till the rawness of the onion and the garlic goes away and the tomato gets a little bit cooked. So we can just fry this for a minute or so and then we're going to cover it up and cook it till the tomatoes and the onions get a little bit soft. This should take about a minute or two. So once this is done, in the meantime you can take a little bit of warm water and soak a very small ball of tamarind because we are going to use the tamarind pulp. Also keep an appam stand ready. And we have this ready-made idli batter or you can use the homemade one. Just add a little bit of salt to taste. Now once our tomatoes and our onions are done well, well it's a little bit, it still has to get a little bit softer. So we are going to cover this and cook it for another minute because we want it to be a very soft consistency. So when you press it down with a spatula, it actually breaks up. So now we've reached the consistency we require. So we're going to turn off our gas and let this mixture cool completely. Now, once our mixture is completely cooled, we're going to grind all of these ingredients to a very fine chutney. So first goes in the onion, the tomato, the garlic, followed by our red chilies and cumin, which have, we have fried. A little bit of salt to taste. I'm adding about half a teaspoon. You can always adjust the salt as required. There goes in the red chilies which we have fried along with the cumin seeds which we have fried. Well this recipe is shared by my sister-in-law Ajita D'Souza. Thanks Ajita. This is such a great recipe when you have unexpected guests coming over. You know, it's so quick and the chutney is just delicious. So there it is. Look at the lovely orange color. 
you can even have this with dosas now for the instant appams just brush the appam pan with a little bit of ghee or oil or butter whatever is your choice and we're just going to pour in our idli batter which uh, we have added a little bit of salt to taste this is an ideal recipe when you know you just want to make something quick for breakfast or you have guests coming over and you just want to have a great snack to offer it's really very delicious and now we're going to just cover this and cook it on one side for half a minute on a low to medium flame till our appams are nice and brown on one side and now using 2 teaspoons first check that a little bit brown they have to be a little bit brown on the edges that we shows that the under side the, the under part is cooked yes there it is a little on the browner side so just turn them very gently using a fork or a spoon the batter will now get cooked on the other side too so you'll have these real crispy instant appams this is not the authentic appam recipe try them till they are really nice and crispy you you can see that they've really cooked very well and it doesn't even take much time to cook about 5 minutes in total on both sides i'll show you one more batch just brush it with some you are i'm using some oil but you can use ghee or you can use butter the pan has to be nice and hot but you make this hot the pan hot on a low to medium flame not on a high flame and fill them up cover and let them cook on both sides till golden brown so friends i hope you like this recipe i hope you will try out this recipe and let me know in the comments box below how you liked it and there it is the lovely red chutney with some amazing friends and welcome back to akshita's recipes thank you so much for joining me today so today we're going to make goan goda che fof which is poha in konkani it's called fof f o v and it's this beautiful light dish which has not much preparation has no oil it's just made with very few ingredients ingredients that we have in our kitchens so let's go ahead and make this beautiful recipe so friends let's see today's lovely recipe it's super easy now here i'm using the medium poha but you have to use the thick poha or the medium one i'll explain it to you at the end of the video Now here I've taken a colander or a sieve or a sift, and I'm going to wash and rinse this poha under running water really well. Just run your fingers through it, see that all of it gets coated and rinsed with the running water. And once we do that, we're just going to set this aside in the colander itself for 15 minutes. So just set it aside. for 15 minutes then it becomes nice and soft and puffed up so this is a no cook recipe no oil nothing used now here i'm grating half uh, a cup of coconut we just need half a cup of coconut for this recipe now i'm going to add this cup of coconut to a large plate here i have half a cup of goa the jaggery that i've grated If you don't have your uh, get this jaggery, you can use regular uh, jaggery that you have at hand. I'm going to add just a quarter teaspoon or one fourth teaspoon of salt, and we are going to mix all of this really well together. 
Now, if you have granules of the jaggery, just crush them up along, you know, with your fingertips till everything gets really nicely mixed up. So now we are going to add the poha to this, to the other ingredients. And again, we are going to mix everything really well. Now, since we are using goa jaggery, so the entire mixture should be nicely coated with the goa jaggery so that it, you don't have any white color left. So that way it gets nicely mixed up. And that's it guys, it's all ready to enjoy with a nice hot cup of tea. Very simple. Now just a few tips is that you have to use this thick poha, not the thin poha. You get thick, medium and uh, thin. You can go for the medium or the thick, not the thin poha. Now you have to, like I showed you in the video, you've got to wash the poha in a strainer. You don't have to soak it in water. Just wash it really well under running water thrice. And then just keep it aside uh, for about 10 to 15 minutes till it nicely puffs up. Then you've got to take the goa jaggery. Now if you don't get your hands on goa jaggery, you can use your regular jaggery that you have at home. The yellowish or brownish colored one. Just grate it very well because that will help you know in it mixing really well with the coconut and the salt and that's about it so it's a very easy recipe it's pretty healthy it's a nice uh, you know evening uh, kind of a snack with tea or in the morning for a light breakfast so if you like today's video don't forget to leave a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to Akshita's recipes spread the word about my channel with family and friends and I'll catch you soon in my next video bye guys Well, today is a Sunday afternoon and it's been raining and uh, I just finished relaxing with a lovely uh, um, old movie that I was watching after I finished lunch. On a Sunday afternoon, I love watching a lovely movie which gives me a nice feel good and then after watching the movie, I always have a 10 minutes nap. So when I woke up, uh, my kids were like, Mama, we want something to eat and we want something sweet. We don't want anything savory. So I have come up with a very quick recipe on uh, a dessert called Shahi Tukda. I make it in a very, uh, I mean, an instant Shahi Tukda. So I'll be showing you this recipe in a very casual vlog uh, way. I will link the actual recipe which is there on my channel. I'll just leave a link in the description box as well as the comments box so you can go and watch it over there. So right now I'll just show you what I've been doing. So now over here, I've taken about two cups of water and I've added about eight cups of regular sugar and a few strands of saffron and I have kept it for a boil for about 15 minutes on a low to medium flame. In the meantime, I've cut up some brown bread into fours so you get these triangular slices and I have roughly chopped up some almonds you can also chop up some cashew nuts some pistachios and just keep them aside now once my oil is hot i've just deep fried the triangle bread triangles till they're nice and golden brown they get ready very fast so keep an eye on them and fry them now we have done with the frying of the bread now, if you want to go for a healthier version, you can even try just toasting the bread so there's no deep frying involved. So you can even just toast the bread in a toaster or just on a regular pan without any kind of oil or butter and then cut them up into slices. So that's a much healthier version. In fact, that just gave me an idea for my next recipe when I'm, when I'm doing a shahi tukana. I'll try doing it with just a plain toast rather than deep frying. So let's see where we've gone, uh, I mean what all is ready and let's just assemble this lovely instant Shahi Tukra. So here I've taken this kind of deep dish which is also microwave proof. You can use any kind of bowl or tray, you know, in which you can uh, soak all of this. Now over here our thick sugar syrup is also ready and I've done the string test as I showed you. 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to assemble this shahi tukda. So I'm just going to put the bread into this dish. And just layer it out. Basically we just want to drench all of these pieces with some amazing sugar syrup. So that is done. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I am just going to be pouring some of this or all of this, you know, over here. So I've got all of that inside. And now all we have to do is just garnish it with some chopped up nuts, whatever nuts you have at home. Get all of that in there and your shahi tukda is all ready to serve. You can serve it hot or you can serve it cold. So this is the amazing shahi thukda. I am going to be tasting one of the shahi thukdas because I love it. So you can see I've already had a bite. Mm, it's nice and crunchy. I don't know whether you can hear the crunch. Mm. But this is really, really amazing. Mm. So it's good. So I hope you try out this recipe. You can serve it hot. Or you can just hold on a minute. So it uh, you can have it hot. Like, you know, you just... Uh, fry the bread pieces, keep your sugar syrup ready and after you drain out all the excess oil on the tissue paper and you just you know assemble it like this and serve it hot or you can just refrigerate it, it tastes even better I think when it is refrigerated and then just drizzle some you know uh, condensed milk on top, that's optional but that makes it a little on the heavier side and little uh, difficult to digest. So, I hope you try out this amazing Shahi Tukra recipe. I have to get a pick. And uh, if you do, and if you like it, then don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. Don't forget to share this recipe with family and friends. Don't forget to leave your comments down below. I generally reply uh, to comments uh, uh, on the same day or if I don't treat it the same day at least the next day but you will be definitely you're definitely sure to hear from me and uh, I really treasure all the comments that you guys leave in the comments box below and uh, don't forget to hit the red subscribe button if you haven't already and visit Akshita's recipes I have loads and loads of recipes um, piled up on my channel I have playlists where you can go and search for what you're looking for so I hope you try out this recipe. We are going to enjoy it at my place. And in fact, my son Aryan loves it so much that, you know, if it remains, I even give it to him. If the dish remains, that is, if any of the slices remain, I just give it to him in the next day for his stiffen box. They remain for a day or two. So uh, try it out. Let me know if you try out the non, uh, the deep, non deep frying only with the toast. I'll be experimenting with that. And if it really is a success, then I will show it on my channel. And uh, I'll end this video and end this uh, casual recipe vlog. See you guys in my next video. Bye-bye.